for the precision rectifier circuit we have two op amps, op amp 1 as the main op amp in the circuit and then op amp 2 as the buffer in the circuit. We also have diode D1 and diode D2 in the circuit and uh, one varying input voltage at the input of the circuit and then one fixed DC voltage 10 volt at the input. So uh, how does we want to see how the circuit is working and then we want to also figure out the voltage transfer characteristic from V in to V out and also draw that VTC or voltage transfer characteristic. Okay, so to, uh, to do that quickly, let's make the assumption that the supply voltages plus minus VDD are properly applied for these two op amps, let's say plus minus 10 or 15 volt. And then with that in mind, we can see that whenever diode D1 or diode D2 uh, one of them at least on, then we have a connection from the output of the op amp back to the input negative terminal of the op amp and therefore that enables negative feedback for op amp 1 which means op amp 1 is properly biased so op amp 1 is properly biased and is in linear region because of negative feedback in linear region because of negative feedback and that implies that the virtual short should, should, valid, should be valid for op amp 1, virtual short, which means the voltage at positive input terminal or non-inverting terminal for op amp 1 is the same as voltage at negative terminal. And since the positive terminal is grounded, as a result, positive terminal is a zero volt, and because of virtual short, negative terminal is forced at zero volt as well because of the negative feedback, which we refer to it as virtual ground. So that's the benefit. Okay. So with that knowledge, we have zero volt here, we have 10 volt on the other side, therefore we can, we have the voltage drop plus minus 10 volt across 4R, we can find as a result of that the current that is flowing fix through the 4R resistor. So this current, let's refer to it as current I1, I can just compute it and say I1 is 10 volt, the voltage drop across 4R divided by 4R amp. Okay, so let's keep that. Um, that's equation that's equation number one so let's name equation one okay what else can we say about this circuit uh, if you take a look at uh, the what we have for v in let's make initially the assumption that v in is zero since v in if whenever v in is exactly zero uh, what we have is on this side of for, for resistor R on one side we have zero on the other side we have zero so that means there is nothing flowing through R so the current through R is zero amp so then where is this current I supposed to go uh, it cannot go through um, let's check so this current I cannot go uh, this way because the input of op amp 2 has practically infinite impedance and no current can flow there so the current going there ha has to be zero then at the same time it cannot go this way because that is not in line with the direction of the diode d2 if it's supposed to be on so therefore there is no current flowing this way so the only way for this current i1 is flow down and that the only thing that remains for is this way because it cannot come and go through the input of uh, the op amp 1 because again for the same reason the input uh, is zero current because the practical it has practically imp infinite input impedance so here is zero volt and zero current so this current I1 has to go through diode D1 and then has to go effectively through the output port or terminal of the op amp okay so what happens is when V in is zero all the current I1 has to go through this diode D1 and the look-off circuit looks like this. So we have, I'm going to show it here. So what we have then is a 10 volt going to 4R and then effectively coming here. This is the op amp number one and this is the negative terminal and positive. Positive is grounded and uh, then input uh, doesn't matter because we are saying effectively this resistor R we are saying V in is zero that's what we assume about V in and uh, what happens is then we have the connection um, 
from negative terminal via diode D1 that is on, so diode D1 on, which we are just practically neglecting its forward bias because it's going to be AC wise, it's going to be very low resistance, like few ohms. So we just basically assume that it is just a short circuit. So when this happens, effectively, what it, and, and diode D2 is off, of course. So this is D2 and D2 is off. So it means open circuit. So what means what it means is this this up this up amp one acts like a buffer, uh, and then as a result of that, the zero volt that is at negative input terminal appears at the output, but then output of up amp one. Uh, but then D two is disconnected from the output. So and then this resistor R cannot pass any this resistor to R cannot pass any current so the voltage here at the input of buffer the final buffer is zero because nothing can nothing is flowing through 2R hence the voltage drop across 2R is zero and the voltage here is zero therefore the voltage here is zero that means the buffer will see uh, just zero appearing at the output so V out is zero that's the case when input is zero and Actually, that's the case when, as long as uh, this current I1 is flowing through diode D1, that is the case. So the only way we can avoid and we can get rid of the situation that V out is zero is when we somehow find a way to sync this current I1 completely through Vn so that it won't go through D1 so that we can turn off D1. That's the plan. So all I'm saying is, in order to start having some non-zero voltage at the output, we need to sync this I1 completely uh, through Vn. That's the plan. Okay, so what is the requirement for that? I need, effectively, Vn to, be, to become negative enough, because you can see it needs to sync the current. So given that on this side we have zero volt, then Vn has to be a negative voltage so that the current can flow toward V in, but it has to be negative enough so that the whole 10 over 4 R flows through V in. Okay, so in order to force D1 to turn to turn off, we need to sync the whole uh, current I1 uh, through so through Vn okay or into Vn so that requires that uh, let's name the current that is going through uh, Vn as I2 or I in that requires I in to be equal to I1 Okay, so basically that threshold that result in D1 turning off. So, or better to say, I in should be at least I1. It should be more, because when it is more, then it means it will require more current, because the I1 is fixed, because I1 is fixed, because 10 volt is fixed. So the if, if V in becomes even more negative, the only way for additional current to come is via 2R and that requires effectively turning on D2 so that this additional current can be provided uh, back to Vn. So I would say in order to turn off D1 and turn on D2, D1 to turn off um, and uh, let's say we put it this way so that it, it, it's more complete. There you go and D2 to turn on okay so now we can say we need to um, sync the whole current I1 through V in in such a way that I in is greater than or equal I1 Okay, so let's now substitute for I in and I1. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. 
I in is obviously given the direction of I in I'm considering is 0 volt minus V in divided by R so it's gonna be um, okay so it's gonna be 0 volt minus V in divided by R and then I am saying this needs to be greater than or equal I1 is what we found in equation 1 so it will be uh, 10 over 4R okay so uh, of course because of negative sign when we adjust and reshuffle things around the direction of the inequality will change and as a result what we get is Vn ne needs to be less than or equal to negative 2.5 volt because R cancel out with R effectively so that's a very interesting result um, it means we just uh, now we have a clue about the VTC or voltage transfer characteristic for any value of V in above negative 2.5 output is 0 so I'm gonna say V out is equal to 0 whenever V in let me use a different color so that it's clear so V out is equal to 0 whenever V in is greater than negative 2.5 volt and something else when this is the case what is that let's take a look at the circuit when uh, we have output in this situation so the circuit looks like this it's gonna be um, VN so it's gonna be uh, 10 volt and then 4R and then we have R and Vn and up amp 1 in inverting amplifier scenario or topology this is up amp 1 and you can see that we are going because this route is active because this route is active so I'm gonna show it one more time this route effectively there is a resistor 2R and we are just neglecting AC wise the fixed DC 4 watt bias voltage of D2 so it's gonna be like this and this node V1 is here and V1 of course is equal to V out because this this second uh, up amp is in buffer scenario which guarantees that V1 is equal to V out okay so I can effectively say V1 equal to V out here alright so what is this this is a simple inverting amplifier with two inputs in two inputs being a fixed 10 volt and VN and uh, it is well known the gain for this one using superposition one by one applying these 10 volt and V in voltages we can say V out in this scenario or V1 basically is equal to neg two, negative 2 R divided by 4 R times 10 so negative 2 R divide by 4 R times 10 and then and then and then we have negative 2 R divided by R times VN so negative 2 R divided by R times VN which is equal to uh, R cancel out R cancel out and this become negative 5 and this become negative 2 Vn this is for the case that Vn is less than or equal negative 2.5 volt okay so this is the VTC voltage transfer characteristics of this uh, characteristic of this circuit diode up amp circuit so um, if we draw it of course I uh, just want to note that this thing I wrote here uh, for the uh, this inverting amplification or amplifier topology is well known but if you want to really quickly get it without using the formula it's easy it's as if we just need to write a KCL or Kirchhoff current law or law of preservation or conservation of current at this node which basically says this current plus this current should be equal to the current going toward Vn and if you write uh, the equation simple equation for these three currents basically if this one plus this one is equal to this one you will exactly find uh, the equation that I wrote here that V out is equal to these two guys 
All right, so let's move on to drawing the VTC. Um, so I'm going to draw it quickly. Uh, basically, I'm drawing this VTC we, we found here. So let's consider uh, Y axis as V out. Let's consider the X axis as V in. Obviously, what we observe is if I have um, um, if I have one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, and five. All right. If I have these guys uh, as a reference point, anything that is less than uh, greater than negative two point five. So if this point is negative two point five for V in then anything above that, when V in is above that, because of what we found, when V in is above that, V out is zero. So uh, therefore I'm showing just a flat line for any V in above the negative 2.5 volt. So V in in volt and V out in volt. For anything below a negative 2.5, then we're gonna have this equation, which is a simple uh, linear uh, relationship between input output with slope of negative 2 and intercept of negative 5 or constant of negative 5. So what happens is we have to draw a line uh, with a slope of 2. So that means when we get down by two point, another 2.5, we go up by another 5 because of the slope of 2. So I need to properly show this that uh, at this point, roughly, at this point, I exactly get to, so I'm going to draw this line. Okay, great. And I'm going to continue drawing this. This is the look of my um, voltage transfer characteristic. And maybe just to have it better, I'm going to just uh, select uh, the color maybe, okay, this is my VTC. And uh, maybe go back to the same color as before because it's confusing. All right, so here is my color. There you go. So this is the VTC. And uh, voltage transfer characteristic. It's now clear that how the circuit is working. Um, and it's basically uh, shifting uh, the level of signal and also then applying a, a gain of negative 2 to the input um, beyond or let's say when we are properly below the threshold voltage of negative 2.5 at input. I hope that this example in, is helpful in terms of showcasing how we can analyze the diode amp, uh, op amp, let's say, or precision rectifier circuits, especially with, uh, with some fixed uh, level shifting, uh, which is controlled by 4R and 10 volt, and then how we can find the VTC of the circuit both equation and also the how we can draw the VTC. I hope this is helpful.